heard from someone it is. I did. <laughs> Should have returned to Jaffa today from Constantinople. She sent word ahead of the accounts and the silks brought from the east, mm -hmm. and she'll be travelling here soon. I love stories of distant places. I wish I could travel like her. I love the story she told from travellers of the Silk Road. She said that silk didn't grow in trees as we taught her, but it's made by caterpillars. Isn't that amazing? Tis are your places here, not in some far off barbarian lands. I know. The roads are not always safe, Turner. And some one of these told us the whole journey there can take more than two years. Wouldn't that be more adventure? You could teach me to fight and then I could fight bandits on the road. Didn't Simonides have to do that, that he, he came when we both small and she was a week late? Tears up. Yes, but Simonides has been a traveller all her life. And she always has an escort to protect her. Malik, her slave and bodyguard, used to be a gladiator, an expert fighter. We have properties in Antioch and Jaffa. I may have to travel there one day. If you do, you will have an escort three times the one Simonides prefers. Master, mistresses. What is it? A message, master. Will there be a reply? Very well. Yes, yes, simply that I shall welcome him as a brother. Go. What is it? His masala. He's returned from Rome. <laughs> After all these years, he is coming back. Well, his home always was here. Do you think he has changed? <laughs> he and Judah were both, what, 14 when he left? You were eight. Well, they're both men now. Men. Not those two boys who almost made my hair turn grey with their escapades. Racing horses outside the city, hunting disappearing for whole days. We weren't that bad. <laughs> ah, Prince of Judea and the Roman governor's son. That is as unlikely and as strong a friendship as I could imagine. I would see those times again. They were the happiest, most peaceful I have known. They will come again. When will he arrive? Tonight. <laughs> Let us leave them with their time together as old friends. We shall see him soon enough. Come, Tirza. Yes, Mother. Really, Judah? Drinking without me? Masala. Ah, you've barely changed. Oh, oh you? You've got the taller than Come, sit. Drink some good wine. Not that rubbish you get served in the Roman army. Ah, that is finer than the wine that gets served in the governor's palace. Bad wine. The best revenge we can get on our conquerors. No wonder we conquered if your defence is led by wine. Bad wine should be a capital offence. How was Rome? You spent the last three years there, I heard. Ah, oh, it was magnificent. You should have seen it, Judah. The centre of the universe, the centre of the civilised world, to kneel at the feet of the great Tiberius himself. That must have been impressive. Indeed. Rome is worthy of the ruined city, and yet not all the world has conquered. The sea has islands yet unseen. In the north, there are lands yet to be visited. The glory of completing Alexander's march to the east has yet to happen. These and many more things lie before an ambitious Roman, Who's willing to take risks to advance? All of these are far off, and Rome cannot conquer everything in the world. Now tell me, did you race horses as we used to here? I did for a time, the finest in my uncle's stables. But I studied too, and I saw wars in lands against other strong armies. And I returned to Rome no longer than my boy is when I left. That reminds me, I had hoped to see your mother and sister. Are they well? Very well. Simply retired for the night. Both were asking after you. Terza, especially. <coughs> they can't wait to see you again. If you can come to supper tomorrow, you'll see them. An invitation? Of course. Just I... as in the old days. I'd love to, but sadly I cannot. Preparations for the governor's arrival. The past needs to be scrubbed and prepared. Training for parade. 
making sure to save the release the faintest idea what they're doing. Fro will return soon, and I look forward to seeing them. In the meantime, I had brought them gifts. This bracelet for Terza and this necklace for your mother, brought from tribal craftsmen in Carthage. I knew I would return here one day, and I kept these safe for them. That is very fine workmanship. Thank you, Masala. They'll be delighted. Regardless of blood, they're as close to a mother and sister as I've ever known. Your family never left my thoughts, Judah. Rome is magnificent, but it can be lonely. The bigger and busier a city, the less time anyone has for friendship. Look, you have always been as a brother to me. Look, are you in Judea for long or merely to visit? No, oh, I intend to remain for a long time. I'm the commander of the garrison now. You will be well suited to it. You know the lands here, the, the peoples, the traditions. You grew up here. I could think of nobody finer for the position. Indeed, and when the lands are come, at the great time, Beerus himself intends to visit these lands. I see. Judah, as my friend and a prince among your people, you too will kneel at the feet of the emperor and share in our glory. You talk of Emperor Tiberius as if, as if he were a god. He is. He is the real power of the Roman Empire, an empire that spans most of the known world and crushes resistance and barbarity without mercy. This brings order and civilization to the people it conquers. This prospect does not excite me as it does you, Masala. Ah, uh, Judah, before we reminisce over the good old days, I must first talk of business. The governor arrives in three days. Already there is talk of violence in the streets against him. Whispers, rumours. No one will talk to Roman of such things, of course. I have heard some of the rumours. Most leaders, though, especially ones who command respect, speak against violence. It serves nobody. But not all the leaders are peaceful. No, not all. And who are the ones that are not peaceful? Masala. Yes, Judah, who are they? A handful in surrounding areas, men of no consequence, as I said. I want to know their names, consequence or no. No. No, you overstep. Just because I do not support violence does not mean that I'll betray my people. I cannot do that. Oh, don't be a fool, Judah. You could be rich and rewarded. Your whole family could. Look around you, Masala. I need no more riches. You could be awarded Roman citizenship, honours heaped upon you, gain the favour of the emperor, having helped to root out chaos and disorder. I will not betray my people. Masala, when he went away, would never have asked this of a friend. I pity you, my fine Judah. A prince among a conquered people, a life with little opportunities compared to what you could have. Stubborn fool, may the gods help you. I can help you. I neither need nor want your help in these matters. Let us speak of it no more. When I am made prefect of Judea to enrich me, I will see you rise with me if only you give me their names. You better leave, Masala. I fear we have both drunk too much wine on a hot evening. I will not have our friendship tainted with this. Give up the follies of Moses and see the situation for what it is. Rome is the world, as the fates will befall Judea, and they will tell you Rome is the world. Rome will conquer all. You rise with her or fall against her. Leave, Masala, please. You have my answer. If you change your mind, you have one day to regain my friendship. Rah! Mother? What happened last night? 
I thought I heard raised voices, you and Masala. You'll not be visiting again, Mother. Ah, so he returned from Rome and the experience had changed him? Maybe I was naive. When my Judah was a child, I would not allow small, small things to trouble him. Now that he is a man, he must not forget that he is still my son. Maybe. I have had cause to think of many things that have never even crossed my mind before. What did Masala say to trouble you so? Here. He came back a Roman, as you said. Well, he was always a Roman. What Masala said, Mother, was sharp enough, but with his manner was intolerable. I suppose all great peoples are proud and should have the right to be, but the pride of his peoples is unlike all others. He considers ours a lower order of people. Why should I kneel to his emperor? For the first time ever in conversation, he has trifled with our customs and our gods. He would never have done that before he went away, just as I've never trifled with his. Mm. Well, Masala is nobly born. From the early days of Rome, they were famous. Some as senators, some as soldiers. Their patronage was sought because they were, and are, rich. As rich as we. And yet, if he boasted of his family, you might shame him by recounting yours. <laughs> the founding of Rome was their beginning, and even the most notable Roman cannot trace their lineage back before the time of Romulus and Remus. Now, our people have, at times, been heedless of certain parts of the law, but never of this. The good rabbi himself has followed the books of generations back through three periods, from the promises, to the opening of the temple, to the present, enabling us once more to trace the her family lines of Jewish descent back fully 2,000 years. <laughs> you need kneel to no emperor. There is no law that determines the superiority of nations, hence the vanity of the claim and the idleness of disputes about it. <laughs> I cannot agree with you more, Mother. It does my heart good to hear your words. Ah, things change. People change. This is a strife that will hurt, but it will heal. Hold true to your morals, Judah. Indeed I shall. <laughs> but the loss of my closest friend. It's a strife that will take a long time to heal. Let it heal. Now... Have you seen the grapevines that Amber's planted in the courtyard? No. Come and see. <laughs> So, you have not yet found the names of these um, native rabble rousers. No, the native people stood together. I've never seen such an intractable people. Even the rich among them, while not openly supporting violence, will give no information. They are proud and recalcitrant and dangerous. All the more reason, at the first sign of insurrection, to put it down without mercy. As an example to all. If talking will not work, if rewards count for nothing, then fear shall drive them to comply. What of the house of her? I'm told you visited them last night. They are rich and powerful. Yes, the son, and now the inheritor of the house, was a boyhood friend of mine. I had hoped he would tell me of the insurgents. And he did not. No, he refused and asked me to leave. They are all the same here. I would not bring my family here. They're far safer in Syria. One day, I hoped... It is hard living so far from them. But I would bring them gifts. The market, you say it's good here? Yes, the native grass people are nothing if not talented. The silks brought across these through the desert are finer than any you'll find in Rome. A new shipment arrived recently at Jaffa. And it will be a good opportunity to walk amongst the people. They can see that I am just like them. That is very dangerous. 
Do you really think that any of that rabble would dare do anything when any man, woman, or child who disobeys Rome will be crucified? But if they do try anything, they'll be made an example of. Like I said, fear may be our only tool to control. Some of them are drunk with religion. There is a new messiah in this rumour has made them bold. There's always one. Uh, there was one predicted when my father was young. He was found drowned in a well near Nazareth. Uh, another three more, I believe, since then. This one is different. He can perform miracles, apparently. So can most of these charlatans. But sorry, you spend too much time around these people. You risk turning native. Jupiter, you almost sound as if you believe them yourself. No, but I know what they believe and how dangerous belief can make otherwise unarmed men, especially on their home soil. I saw it myself when I fought the Celts in the north. Religion can turn a cowed man into a man brave beyond fear of his own death. I heard the words of the Celtic Druids turn women into screaming demons who stood to the waist in the most unseemly manner, rushed into battle alongside their men and they fought in just a deadly manner. No religion can make man, Celt, Greek, or Jew into a match for a Roman pilum. Now, I am going to the market. If I am attacked, they will be made an example of. How many gods? Two, if you insist. Three then, in total. Then they will perceive that I am not a threat. I could be their friend. You will not find a warm welcome here. You will be seen as a target. Masala, I am decided. Besides, how could I be in any danger with valiant men such as yourself as my bodyguards? Judah, I'm going to the market soon. Before it becomes off. Oh, look. Isn't that the new governor? Valerius Carlton? Yes. I believe it is. I recognise the soldier to his left. Isn't that? Yes. That is Masala. Why did he leave like that? I heard you both arguing together. Mother said she spoke to you about it, but she wouldn't tell me anything other than the fact we'd just grown apart. Yes, look, I think it's best on reflection if you wait a while. Take the maid servant Tamara with you. If there is trouble, I don't want you anywhere near it, especially not now. No Roman commander would walk like that amongst the crowds if he did not seek trouble. What do you mean? I think it's clear there will be trouble, if only people testing the resolve of the new governor. He's presenting himself as bait, and that is too tempting a bait for everyone to resist. He's clever. And that's what you and Masala were arguing about? In a manner. Double the Roman! I... There! Close up, stand back. I'll explain it was an accident. Do you hear me? Say nothing. <laughs> Silence! Is this all of the family, sir? Yes, the man of our other sister had the servants killed. Miss Ola, it was an accident. You have to believe me. We were watching the market blow and a roof tile gave way under my hand. Nobody attacked the governor. The governor's been taken back to the past. I do not know if he will survive. This was an obvious and calculated assassination which failed. Sir? That's the one who threw the tile. Masala, punish me if you must, but please help my mother and sister. Spare our servants. Masala, remember your childhood, I pray you. Take the women to the cells. Do not harm them for now. I'll question them later. As for the man, bind him and take him to the streets. No, Masala. Masala, please. No. Masala, you no. can't do this.
There are two native women to see you, sir. What do they want? They asked to see you in person. The older one said she was a servant to the her household. I thought we had them all arrested or executed. Hmm. Send them in. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Didn't you hear me? This was their country before ours. I want to see them. Send them in. This way. Well? My lord Masala, I'm a servant of her household. My name is Simonides. Yes, I remember the family mentioning your name. You run their affairs in the port of Jaffa. What do you want? I heard that young Judah is charged with trying to murder Governor Gratus. You must know, Masala, that he is incapable of such a thing. He is a man of peace. <coughs> peace? He attempted to murder the governor in front of a marketplace full of witnesses. If you do not believe that of him, they fooled you too. How is the governor? I, I heard he lived. The governor may or may not survive. I'll pray for him and of my master and mistresses. I have dealt as mercifully as I may within the law of Rome. Judah Ben Hur is sent to the galleys for life. <laughs> it was either that or crucifixion. To crucify a prince of the city would only make him a martyr. Better he die nameless, chained to an oar. <gasps> Miriam and Terza have committed to prison. Again, oh. that is for life. Is there no mercy in your heart? They are innocent. You know them. You were as a son to Mistress Miriam. I will not be lenient with insurgency, especially attempt on the life of the governor. If he dies... If I may... Enough. St. Julian, take the older woman to no. the cells. Drive the young woman no. into the street. No, my oh. mother. But no, you can't. No, no. 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 You then, oh! bring us water. <coughs> Not for him. But... Not for him. Rabbi Joseph. Rabbi Joseph, here is a man who is thirsty and exhausted, and the Romans say we may not give him any water. Oh. May the peace of our Lord be with you, and that of the gods be with you. Have you travelled from Jerusalem? Yes. May I ask what this prisoner has done? He looks almost dead, and if you have marched from Jerusalem on foot in this heat, then he does indeed need water. He is a murderer, and he is a son of Israel. <coughs> I know nothing of your people. You may have heard of a prince of Jerusalem named Hur, who lived in Herod's day. Yes, I have seen him. This man is his son. In the streets of Jerusalem the day before yesterday, he tried to murder the noble governor Gratus by flinging a brick upon his head. A ridiculous attempt, but nevertheless, one which caused significant injury. Did this man kill the governor? Valerius Gratus may or may not live. This man is under sentence. The galleys for what remains of his life. Then may the Lord help him. I said no water for him. Come on, you. You don't worry. Come on, The hot potato shall be here shortly. Welcome to Mycenaeum Tribunarius. 
Voltaita, we received our orders from the Divine Tiberius. We've been ordered to dispatch ten trimarines to wipe out the pirate fleet that's ravaging the Aegean. The core merchants of the eastern Mediterranean are terrified. With good reason. If we do not rout these pirates, there'll be no grain coming to Rome. What does come will be such a high price, there'll be riots in the street for bread. Representative, the, the third they sent, for the first to arrive, without audience with the Emperor. So we leave at once. Yes, Tribune. Tell me, what's the condition of my ship? She is almost ready. Repairs are complete. We have supplies and arms, and the rowers are almost boarded. How many? 252. Reliefs? 84. Changed on rotation every two hours. A hard division, but correct. The rowers are all healthy, I take it? Yes. They are all fit and healthy, all those boarded so far. I would not permit otherwise, Tribune. Good. Are they obedient? Yes. They know their place. You will have no trouble from them. There is one who is unknown to me, yet to come aboard, but we have a good report of him. He has served three years on other ships, they say. Three years? That is what they say, Tribune. Very well. I should be curious to see him for myself. It's, it's rare they spend more than a year. Three is unheard of. Oh. This is on whom I speak, the one in green. Oh, boy. Very well. Do we have our full complement? Yes, Tribune. Good. We shall leave when the sun hits the harbour wall. For now, see the ship is spotlessly clean. Gods only know how, but a clean ship means less disease. I don't want to lose any of my rows. Portated, they've rested long enough. We followed the coast to where the pirates are reported. They can't be far. And begin. <sighs> that man, number 60, bring him to me in the next rest period. I'm curious about him. He's different from his fellows. There's a manner about him. Tribune Arius wants to see you. Attend him before you rest. Me? What's for? He was watching me earlier. Have I offended or displeased? I know not. Go, go, hurry. Dominus, I was asked to report to you. Yes, yeah, 60. The Hortator says you're our best rower. The Hortator is kind. He said that you have seen three years' service. Yes, and two days. You keep an exact count. Yes, the work is hard. Few men bear it a year without breaking. How is it that you've lived the three? Or is that but a, a tale that men tell? The noble Arius forgets that endurance has much to do with spirit. By itself, any man may survive as long as he needs. You are a slave. And you are condemned to die as a slave. You're a proud man, that I can tell. You speak as one who's educated well. I am indeed proud of my people, and to be one of them. And your people? Where did you come from? Jerusalem. Ah. I wondered if you were a Jew. I once knew a prince of the city, but to be a king. What degree are you? 
I must answer from the bench of the galley. I'm of the degree of slaves. But it was not always so. Huh? My father was a prince of Jerusalem and sailed to seas for many years as a merchant in his younger days, before his ship was taken by pirates. He was known and honoured by the Emperor Augustus. His name? Ithama, of the house of Hur. Ithama. You are the son of Hur. Yeah, I thought there was something familiar about you. I knew him very well. What, what in the name of the gods has brought you here? I was accused of attempting to assassinate Valerius Gratus, the governor of Judea. You're the assassin. <laughs> all, of, all of Rome rang with the story. People spoke of, of naught else for weeks. It said the assassin's family were wiped from the earth, that's what was told. Forgive me, I must ask. Do you know anything of them? My, my mother, my sister Terza. That day is more than three years ago. If only I could forget. My sister was torn from me. My mother's eyes as she looked at me for the last time. These things are burned into my soul. I see them every day. I have felt the shock from ships in battle and storms lashing the sea and laughed. Death would have been a blessing to be rid of the memory of what I did to them. Nothing was ever as true as my mother's love. And Terza... Terza was the most beautiful maiden of Jerusalem. And it was my hand that laid them low. I... Do you admit your guilt? You have heard of the God of our fathers. By his truth and by the love which he has followed Israel from the beginning, I swear that I am innocent. Do you have a trial? No. No trial. No witnesses. Well, then who passed sentence? They bound me in house and dragged me to the streets. Then soldiers brought me to the coast. I've been a galley slave ever since. There was no trial. If there, if there had been a trial, what could you have proven? If I had meant to kill him, then... In daylight at the markets where he's attended by guards is not the time or place to do it, even for a madman. I was of a class most friendly to Rome. My father had been distinguished by his services to the emperor. My family's honour and lives were my responsibility. And the law to a son of Israel no different from breath would have stayed my hand, however strong my desire, and I had no desire to harm anybody. Who was with you when the blow was struck? Where were you? On the house rooftop. Terza was with me. We were watching the markets below, and she expressed a wish to visit it later. A tile gave way under my hand. And your mother? Where was she in all of this? In her chambers below. Sewing, I believe. And you've no idea what happened to them? I do not know. They were dragged away. The servants were killed or driven from the gates like cattle, and then the gates were sealed so that none could return. Please, if you have any. I should ask your pardon, Tribune. I shall not speak thus. I am bound to an awful life. Pardon, Grazie, go to your rest. If you were free, what would you do? The noble Arius mocks me. No, 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 I, I, I swear by the gods, I don't mock you. Then I would seek my mother and Terza, and not know true rest until they were safe. I would care for them. No slave could be more faithful. I spoke to your ambition, not your love. If your mother and sister were no more, what would you do then? You ask me what pursuit I would follow if I had lost all purpose. Yes. I know not. A man such as yourself, there could be renown in the life of a gladiator. And it may lead you to 
Favour with the Emperor. I thought. Go. Pirate fleet is ahead! We should be a war before the sun hits the middle of the sky. Yes, Tribune. <clears throat> and rest. Chain them. Now! Present your irons. Slave! <clears throat> Clear this useless waste of space. Don't chain that one. He'll row far better without. If he's obedient, you'll have no trouble from him. Yes, Tribune. Your lucky day, 60. And begin! The Emperor's meeting with the Tribune Arius this afternoon. I hear if it wasn't for those Tribune slaves, he would have lost his life. A slave? But why would a slave have cause to rescue his master when to let his master die ensures his freedom? Would you expect your slave to give his life for yours? Of course, yes. Such is the law of Rome, but galley slaves are the worst of criminals. I would not expect such manners from them. The base impulse of men? Men long to be free, whether it is their place or not. So, what happened? <laughs> the battle was long overdue, and for the past two years, the pirates have never returned to the Aegean. 
Most of our fleet was lost, I heard. The Tribune Arius was thought lost too. After all, if he had fallen in the water, well, he would probably have drowned, weighed down by his heavy armour. But a galley slave who had broken free of his chains dragged him from the water. Don't ask me why. Of course, the Tribune Arius thought the battle was lost, but the slave would not let him kill himself. In the end, they were picked up by another Roman vessel, and the Tribune Arius learned the news that they had indeed won. I mean, he'd lost the fleet. But they did destroy the pirates. <laughs> the Tribune Arius was so blinded by gratitude that he refused to return the slave to the oar and instead ordered that he accompany him here to Rome. I would have returned the slave to his rightful place at the oar where he belongs. As would I. They are dangerous criminals. But who knows what goes through a Tribune's mind, especially a unbeliever like Arius. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not our place to question. <laughs> no, it is not. But it is strange. And he brings the slave here, I gather. To the palace of Tiberius. Indeed. Well, we have orders to be especially on our guard. Do we know anything about this slave? Oh, yes, he's from Judea, I believe. <laughs> I hear they are strange. Not always submissive to the rule of Rome. <laughs> no, they are not. Well, my brother is stationed out there. It is dangerous, so he says. It was only a couple of years ago that a prince of the city tried to murder the governor. <laughs> and everyone thought he was a friend of Rome until then, of course. Yes, I had heard. Who hadn't? Oh, I've got a great one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've got Silence! Sorry! Sorry! As I was saying, Arius, a great victory won. Yes, ye yes, yes, Divine Emperor. The heat up there is completely exhausting, but that is beside <laughs> the point. Stand here with me in the shade. You should stay here in Rome, Arius. I have need of men like you. You could have any position you wish. Name which promotion you would seek. You speak of the heat in Rome. I feel it too. It's, it's, it's why I prefer the sea and, and my villa in Jena. But, but I, I am honoured to have protected Rome from such a threat. My life is spent in service to Rome. I don't know the ways of the city and of politics. Divine Emperor, let me remain where my skills may be the greatest service. I have never understood your l obstinate lack of ambition, Arius. But perhaps you do speak wisely. An overambitious man is not one who can always be trusted. I am a soldier, Divine Emperor, not a politician. But if I was to come to Rome, I'd have to become a politician. <laughs> That's not a battlefield I know. Yeah. I am well aware of that. And different men are most suited for different purposes. I shall make best use, as you say, of your skills as a soldier, then. You say this is your son. Bring him forward. Y yes, uh, my son, Gaius Arius, heir to all I possess. I did not know you had a son living, Arius. I believed your son died as a small child. Uh, you are correct, Divine Emperor. This is my adopted son. This is the man who saved my life in the battle. Without him, I wouldn't be stood before you in your gracious presence. I came to trust him. More than that, to see him as my son, since he returned to Rome with me. The galley slave. The Senate has been debating how you may be rewarded for your faithful service to the Empire. You have been granted Roman citizenship. You are to be thanked. Tell me, where are you from? To the east, divine emperor. Hmm. And clearly of noble birth. That I can tell by looking at you. And this is your first time in Rome? It is, divine emperor. And it impresses you? It is a magnificent city. Hmm. Well, Arius, you are to be richly rewarded. You and your son. I gather your son is a splendid gladiator and charioteer. 
Of course, it is unheard of for a Roman nobleman to engage in such pursuits. But he is adopted, after all. A strong fighter. He, he knows horses like no other. Mm, yes, word has reached me of his victories. Young Arius winning five times in contests in the circus. A daring thing for a young man to do. Especially defeating the gladiator Magnus Cassius. Well, he's far from the only one, maybe the only one of noble birth. But many young men seek such excitement to stop them falling into idleness. I'd rather that than have him find uh, wine and loose women. And so many others in his class. Mm. The old discipline and virtuosity of Rome. Now quite lost amongst the opulence and wealth. You and your son are a dying breed, Arius. I would there were more like you. If, if I may speak boldly. Without discipline, our, our great empire would be lost, divine emperor. Quite so. If only more thought as you do. Well, <clears throat> return to your villa, you and your son. I shall call upon you when the time comes, Quintus Arius, and I shall await that command, divine emperor. There is something I must ask. Oh, the, the Emperor was very impressed with you. He's kind, but my question is more personal. As a Roman citizen, I may at last travel where I will, unhindered, unquestioned. You may. I must return to Judea to look for my mother and sister. I always knew this would happen. I shall miss you, though. Will, will Rome see you again? It would be my wish to see you again. I never fear. I will always conduct myself in a manner befitting a son of Arius. I would expect nothing less. Do I have your blessing? Of course. Uh, on one condition. That I occasionally hear word from you. That you are well and if things should go ill. That you, your mother and your sister will always find a safe home here in Rome. They're your family. You're my son. Therefore they're my family too now. I cannot believe it. If I was your age, I would do more than drink wine and consort with whores. You were the finest young traitor I knew. Now look at you, debauched and drunk. And I heard, in bed with four whores last night. We only arrived yesterday. Yes, and all the goods from the caravan remained spilled in the warehouse, unsorted. I can't break it all under. And if you use language like that again in front of my daughter, I will see you chained to an oar in my fleet. Instead of master of a caravan. I screech like a god for saying of harping. Stop it! Who is that woman? Oh, Simonides, a merchant who is rich beyond words. She used to be servant to a prince of Jerusalem. Then the prince died. The son tried to murder the Roman governor. And the entire family were wiped from the earth. She managed the family's finances. And despite several attempts by Governor Gratus to find it, she never told of its location. She bought herself immunity from Emperor Tiberius himself. She has an enormous fleet, trading all across the Mediterranean and the barbarian seas beyond. Simonides, thank you. Do you know where she resides? Well, when she's here in Jerusalem, she lives over there in a house that looks for all the world like a buttress in the wall, just there. Take my baggage to the Roman citadel. They will be expecting Gaius Arius. Tell them that I shall arrive later, but that I have business in the town first. Yes, Dominus. I will request a bath after this journey. Yes, Dominus. I am disgusted you had to hear such language, Esther. Oh, mother, I live here by the wall. Traders around the world pass here. I hear such words, and worse. They ought not speak thus in front of young women. They should be flayed alive. Pardon me, mistress. There is a young Roman nobleman here to see you. Well, does he have a name then, huh? Uh, Gaius Arius, I believe. Arius. 
I know the family. Send him in. Hurry up! Don't wait to bow. Get on with it. The sooner I see him, the sooner he leaves, and I can have my evening wine. Uh, mother, you're uncomfortable. Stop. Stop fussing me. Stop it. Wait here. You are far more skilled than that useless scribe of mine. Okay, very well. What can I do for you, young man? If you are the Simonides whom I seek, then the peace of the God of our father Abraham be upon you, and upon you also. I return your salutation, but I must admit I'm quite surprised. I was expecting Gaius Arius, son of the Roman tribune Quintus Arius. I am the adopted son of Quintus Arius. I see. Continue. By birth, I am Judah ben Hur, son of Ithamar, eight head of the house of Hur and a prince of Jerusalem. Well, the princes of Jerusalem are always welcome in my home. Esther, bring the young man a seat. Come sit with us for a while. Be seated and addressed. I knew the Prince of Her. I pray you, sit, Esther, bring the young man a drink. Is this your mother? Yes. Simonides, my father had a trusted servant living in Antioch, and I believe you are that woman. I have grown old before my time dealing with men. If you are who you say you are, then lay the proofs before me. Simonides, I can only tell you my story. The Roman part I can prove with ease. I need only send for the consul. Before then, very little. To tell the tale briefly, I was taken from my home in Jerusalem and sent to the galleys. Three years I toiled at the oar, kept alive only by the belief that my life could not end there. I counted the days. Soon after the third year began, I was put aboard a new galley, the ship of Quintus Arius, which led the Roman fleet against the pirates in the Aegean. I have heard of that battle, and were it not for the Roman fleets wiping out those accursed pirates, we would have never expanded our trading routes. Continue. The galley was mortally struck and sank. The tribune was wounded. I carried him to safety on a raft, and we were picked up by another ship of the fleet. Arius decided to show his gratitude by making me his son. As you can see, I bear the family ring. Uh, so, I am to believe that the son of my master, who has never worked a hard day's labor in his life, spent three years chained to an oar when most men would survive but one if they were lucky and born to hard work, then returns a rich Roman nobleman after two more years. Why did you not return before? Some in Rome were as taken aback as you. Mm. And until I was legally declared a Roman citizen, I could not travel. Mm. If I was to be recognized, I could find myself sent to the galleys once more. I see. And I clearly see the difficulties of my position. I cannot prove a thing that happened before that last galley to which I was assigned. You know as well as I, the galley slave is nothing but a number. He is stripped of his identity and his past. Therefore, I have no proof of that past. I would ask one thing before I leave. Have you any word of my mother and my sister? No, not since they were arrested in Jerusalem. They were imprisoned, and nothing could convince Masala or Governor Gracchus to give them up. They are lost, and I have searched every day for the slightest word. I thank you. Please go with you. This way, Master. To the stables. We shall make a horse ready for you. Did you not believe that that man is Judah Ben-Hur? Well, he has the look of it, Lamar, and the face I'd expected, the young boy I once knew now grown to a man. But Esther, I must be sure, for if a member of the house of her lives, then I am still their property, as are you, Esther, as my daughter. And I will not see the family's future fall into false hands by one who speaks untruth, or a man who has been turned cruel by Rome cause harm to you. I will see that he is who he claims, and if he is, that he's a good man before I decide what to do. But he spoke fairly. Yes, but fair words may hide ugly deeds. Anyone may speak fair words. A man's heart 
is shown through his deeds. We shall see, yes. Mother! We shall see. Malik! Yes, mistress? The young man who just visited here, what was your impression of him? Nobly born mm -hmm. and well educated. Mm -hmm. Though I should not think he was born a Roman, mm -hmm. that seemed to me a, a thin veil that was unfamiliar to him. But a claim such as his needs proof, in that both he and you speak wisely, mistress. I knew Judah Ben-Hur as a young boy, and this could be him grown to a man. As a boy, he was willful, but well-mannered and kind, and he doted on his mother and his sister. My thoughts, too. Keep an eye on him. See what you can find out, but don't let yourself be seen. Tell me how he conducts himself, where he goes. Oh, oh. oh, that wine is revolting. Is that not bought from Hold On the Phoenician? Uh, yes, mistress, oh. I shall. And yes, the, the wine is from Master Arm, as uh, always. Well, he must be using fermented donkey droppings instead of grapes, then. You can tell him I said that. Listen, I want his best wine. Go and see him tomorrow. And if it tastes like this one, I will be taking my business elsewhere. Uh, yes, mistress, director. If I may, the young Roman. Where did he say he was staying? He's staying at the Roman Citadel, I believe. That's where most Roman noblemen visiting the city usually stay. And if he is our Judah, he will most likely visit his old house and the horse market and race horses, because Judah loved horses. Go. could drive my horses. You swore by all your brood of bastard Latin gods. Don't it's no. not See them? Priceless! I'd attach one of them with a lash. Oh, fool that I was. You claim to know everything there was to know about horses. Yes, I do. You know nothing! Esther. Judah? What are you doing here? I love seeing horses. They are beautiful animals. Yes, they are. That man gives a Celt from barbarian lands to the north. His name is Caswaran. They say he was taken as a slave in a battle and trained as a gladiator to Ludus in Carthage and won his freedom. He trains gladiators himself now too, though <laughs> he is no lover of the Romans, but comes to race against them. I heard. Some of the Celts are intensely proud of their horses and their horses' bloodlines as much as the Bedouin of the deserts here. They chronicle them going back centuries. Some of the horses are as close as family. Oh, I should set the last to you. See how you feel with a whip across your back, touching my beauties with a whip. Yes, a whip. No. They need a gentle, firm hand, not a whip. You would need a. Have you never felt the kiss of a whip? Yes. Maybe you should. I know you should. Where's that stupid whip? Oh. Slay! Bring me that oh. whip! This me instant! Some, I just need some fresh Slay! Some Where's that whip? Oh. Whoa! Oh. 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 Look, oh. whale! Pardon, I pray. I, I didn't quite see you. I'm a sailor. I trusted more than I should after this wine. Oh, hello, you. A beautiful woman, a poor himself, may mistake you for his love. Don't turn away a truce or even a kiss. What a stubborn woman. Huh? At least tell me I am uh, pardoned by such fine company. <clears throat> Judah, is Gaswaran unhurt? I can speak for myself, girl! I don't need some little wisp of a woman. Speaking for me, I have received and given far worth in the arena. Thank you, young man. And as for this foolish, young, Roman drunkard, well, the game's approached soon enough. You compete, I hear. Let us all see what shame drunkenness brings to you. <laughs> what a mighty 
contest against such poor little nags. I look forward to it. More wine! Nags! Oh, that foolish young peacock masala. Thinks he will win every race. Up till now he has. But his luck will not hold out forever, especially if he drinks like that. Well, who are you, young man? Gaius Arius. Oh, a Roman. I had thought you of better stuff. But I have heard of your name. You were at the Circus Maximus more than once. I heard of your victories. How very impressive. So, son of Quintus Arius, it's rare for a Roman nobleman to compete in the arena. But you know Masala. I saw it on your face. You know him. Without much love, I think. We have met. Are you competing here? No. I have other business. A shame. Seek me out, and only me, if you consider changing your mind. <sighs> no, yes, indeed! Esther, go home. What are you going to do? I can take care of myself. Esther, please, before it gets dark and there are more drunks with loose words. Please. Judah. Esther. Ah, go fetch my sword. Go on, drink. Have a little jewel. Come on, Drusus, I don't have all day. Well, I do. There we go. See how we do. You're racing your black horses at the gates. Of course. Keep your guard up, you fool. What did you think of the Celt's horses? Huh. Here's the unknown factor. I wouldn't mean it. Open me, it wouldn't be seen me. The charioteer is a fool. It cannot control his horses. But he won't fight the bear one before the race. So, victory is certain. As certain as it can be. Well, very certain. Dominance, you have a visitor. Who is it? Gaius Arius, the son of Tribune Arius, Dominance. Son of Tribune Arius? What's he doing in Jerusalem? I heard Arius was in Rome. I heard the story of the fleet's victory. Arius and his son were honoured by the divine Tiberius. There's been no pirates in the Aegean since. Of course, everyone heard about that one. Just, did he say why once? He told me nothing, Dominus. He said he would only speak with you. Well, it must be very important then. Send him in. I'll go. No, stay. This way, Dominus. Masala. Young Arius. Masala. Juno, by the gods, how do you come by the name of a consul of Rome? By your hand, Masala. You condemned me to the galleys. I saved the life of Tribune Arius. Uh, have you come to kill me? I thought about it, Masala. Over and over again. Every day, every night, awake and asleep with every stroke of that oar, you changed me to! Imagining how I would kill you and watch the life drain from your eyes. But I will forget what happened if my mother and sister are restored to me unharmed. Where are they? In the prison. I don't have the record. Find here. them, Masala. Find them and restore them to me. If they are harmed. It was five years ago. I Make it know. happen. I will visit again tomorrow. 
I would expect to see. Find them, Drusus! What are their names? Must I do everything myself? Miriam and Tursa are the house of her. What if they're dead? Five years in the prison. Then they're dead! Why are you so afraid? I'm not. But any man who survived five years in the galley said that's unthinkable, unheard of. Go and tell Governor Gratis. If Judah Ben Hur is a Roman citizen decorated by the Emperor, we can't touch him. Just pray the whores are still alive. Did you find him? Malik could not find him at the horse market. I did. Judah has a love of horses, the same as Judah does, the same gentle ways. Or did. I found him at the training yard of the circus, admiring the horses of Kelkas Warren. And then Masala came, drunk, who almost knocked Kas Warren over. He might have been a famous gladiator in his youth days, but not now. I could tell that Judah recognized Masala, though how he controlled himself, I, I will never know, Mother. He was beyond rage. Did Masala recognize him? Uh, no. Judah introduced himself as Gaius Arius, his Roman name. Ah, so we know that Judah, this young man, certainly hates Masala. Yeah, and the Celt noticed too. Ah, I know of Caswarren. I know he's no lover of Rome. Uncouth, but honorable. So how did this young Arius behave towards you? Curious and gentle, uh, though I could see that rage and violence was not familiar to your mother. Mm, that'll do for now. Uh, how long is this going to go on for? Until I am satisfied. I will not and do not trust easily. Go on, Roman Kerr. I will not suffer you to lay hands on my beautiful horses again. What? No! Not even to look at them. I'm looking at them now! Ah! Be thankful that I do not whip you into the sea with my bare hands. Or, even better, let my gladiators brakes on you! Go before I come after you! From Masala. Ah, Drusus, what can I do for you today? A wager, perhaps? No bets today. Masala is after two prisoners. Women from the house of her, Miriam and Terza. Been in the prison for about five years. I've not heard of them. I've only been working here a year. Just bear with me a moment while I have a look through my records. Ah, Marianne. That's the commoners. Look through the nobles. Found them. The lower west level, at the end of the corridor. Are they alive? It reads here that their food disappears, but no one's seen them in the flesh. Bring them here. I need to see them. Well, Drusus, you could always come see them for yourself. Oh, 
This is them. Miriam Taza of the house of her. Stay away. My lord Masala wishes to see you. No. Get up. Stay away, please. I said get no, up. No, we cannot. We are lepers. No, oh, lepers. Lepers. What? God have no mercy. You. Get them out of here. Turn them loose outside the city. Burn out the cell. Oh. At last, tears are blessed. We shall get to see the sky again. <laughs> Masala? Well? I found the woman. Well, where are they then? Send them in. Well? The lepers. Turned loose <laughs> outside the city gates oh. as with all their kind. Uh, uh, lepers? Yes. They uh. won't live long. It's a living death. Judah must never find out. We must believe they're dead. But... Judas said that should any harm come to them. And how much worse do you think things are going to get when he finds out they are lepers and he cannot aid them? They're dead, Drusus. I understand. Judah returns tonight. I will tell him. If it should go ill, arm yourself. Judah is not one to break his word. <laughs> Give me my sword, Drusus. This way, Dominus. He's coming. You! What's the bit? Be quick! Well, Masala? I sent my best man to the prison. Well? Dead, dead, Judah. Over a year ago. Dead? Yes, Judah. Return to Rome. You have made a new life for yourself. You see then. fit to give me advice, Masala! It was merely a suggestion. Return to Rome. Make a new life. Do not follow the shadows of the past. This is our old house, Tirza. Can we not at least ask if there has been word of Judah? No, we cannot. We must leave the city. We will be stoned if we are still here at dawn. We have to go. Excuse me. I know your voice. Stay away. You, you speak of a man named Judah? Judah Ben-Hur was my son. Then this was our home. You must be my mistress, Miriam. I'm Esther, daughter of Simonides. Don't you recognize me? And you must be Terza. Please, come inside. No, Esther, we cannot. Well, you have nothing to fear. No, Esther, we are oh. lepers. Uh, mother must be told. No, there is nothing that she can do. Just answer me this one thing. What became of my son? Oh, J Judah, he's here in Jerusalem. I saw him a couple days ago. Uh, he's searching for you, though. Oh, that must be why Masala's asking after us. <laughs> Esther, promise me this, Judah must never know. Do you understand? But you must be told. There must be something that can be done. No, there is nothing that can be done. He must remember us as we were. Is he well? Yes, he is, but listen. Mother must be told. Please let us help you. No, tell no one. Let Judah think us dead. It is a more merciful end than this. But we are leaving the city. Where are you going? There is only one place we can go. To the Valley of the Lepers, where all such as we go. Goodbye, Esther. Thank you. Judah, where, where are you? 
you going? I don't know, Esther. Back to Rome. I saw Masala today. My, my mother and sister are dead. There is nothing for me here, but I have something such as it is in Rome. I want you to come with me. I want you to see my mother before you go. I should bid her farewell. She's an honest, loyal woman. Is that you, Esther? Yes, and I brought you a visitor. Hmm. Young Arius, is it not? Yes. Simonides, I have come to bid you farewell. I am leaving. And where will you be going? Back to... Back to a small villa on the northern coast of Italy. And leave everything here? There is nothing for me here. Are you so sure? You said so yourself. No, I have nothing. My mother and sister are dead. I cannot prove who I am. I shall never return. Oh, you foolish boy. I had my daughter Esther follow you into the city. I had my slave Malik here prove himself useful for once. And he followed you to that young Roman. We had to be convinced that your words were true. We know now that you are our Judah, and all that we have saved and built of your family's fortune is yours. I was your father's slave. I am yours. I ask but one thing, that you treat my daughter Esther with kindness, for she too is your property. But Simonides, what of you? Do with me as you will. And you are free, Simonides. <laughs> What manner of man would I be if I'd not reward you? You and Esther are free to live where you will. And neither of you will want for anything. I do not wish to keep slaves. And where I wish to stay, Judah, is here. Let me continue my work. I have built trade for your father, and in your absence for you, I have secured safe passage for our ships from Tiberius himself. And what do you wish to do, Esther? Uh, I want to stay here with my mother. Then I thank you both with <laughs> tenfold as much gratitude as before. Thank you. For now then, I shall stay. I shall send word ahead to Arius that he will not see me in Rome for some time. Wait, wait, I have a letter for you. Here, young man, from Kaz Warren. I met him once. Well, it appears I'll be meeting with the Celt tomorrow. <laughs> Still a moment, then. How did you know where to write to me? Oh, the girl. She's a daughter of Simonides, the merchant. A fine woman. So, when I decided to write to you, I wrote a letter to Simonides addressed to you. I thought you would return them at some point, or that they would know where to find you. I see. And what did you want to speak to me about? <laughs> the games! I still seek the right man. The man who can destroy Masala. Young... Arius, five-time victor at the Circus Maximus, recently arrived from Rome without purpose and with a history of some kind with Masala, which he does not speak. Maybe just my man. I've not yet decided if I shall be staying for long. But long enough to stay for the games. No. I have other things on my mind. Masala murdered my family. I swore revenge, but I am bound by the law. I will not become a murderer. Murdered your family, not that of Quintus Arius. So who were you before? The same man as I am now. Judah Ben-Hur. <laughs> oh, but I suspected as much. I knew your father. He and that Egyptian Balthazar and Simonides. So, Masala will have killed your father, Mother, sister, and brothers. My mother and my sister, yes. And what of your wife? I'm not married. <laughs> Foolish! Of course you should be married at your age. A fine young man like you. But never mind that. I have a way you can get revenge on Masala. I will not break the law. 
Ah, hear me first. There is no law in the arena. No law. Consider that. That young drunk takes pride, far too much pride in his wins. Run there he is. And though we all know his wins are not honest, and in winning, unopposed. You are a five-time victor at the Circus Maximus in Rome. Imagine that Roman's arrogance trampled into the dust, shamed before his Roman rabble by a man of the very people they despise. And it's not just his pride, because Messiah and his friends, they love gambling as much as they love their pride. And in that pride, they would probably gamble away their entire fortune on the perceived difference between Roman and non-Roman. A slow and long shame. Huh? <laughs> so much better than a quick death. And how does any of this help you? To see that Roman's arrogance trampled into the dust. Besides, I need a skill. I have found none other I would trust. I have heard of your victories. I have spoken to people. I spoke to a Greek recently arrived. He told me of your skills. Then the Lord must work in mysterious ways. I will take up your offer. It appears we both have cause to despise Masal, and we can both hope. Ah! <laughs> oh, yes! Yes! I shall send for Masal straight away. No, even better! I shall just go myself! Ha 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 ha! Oh! And uh, what should you say, Masala, if I should bet on any horses but yours? Nay, hey, fear not. I've seen these other contestants. They're pitiable as usual. If they were women, I'd weep for them. As that slave girl was weeping after you finished with her last night. Ah, I shan't bother with her again. All she did was struggle and cry. Ah, oh, I'll sell her. I might buy her. I uh, like it when they struggle. <laughs> oh. I heard uh, Judah Ben Hur is leaving the city soon. Yes, there's nothing left for him here, but I shall sleep better when he is gone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I wanted a word with you. How very forward for a man who was once a say demanding a word. Very well, a word you shall have. You are a gambling man, and so when it pleases me am I, I have decided after much deliberation to enter my horses and my men into the games. I am already well aware of this, so how does this concern me? Well, I wondered if you might want to bet. Yours against mine, say two to one. <laughs> you must be very confident in your man. I heard you're still looking for one. So, who do you have in mind? Oh, just some young man of the city in whom I have great faith. <laughs> a man of the city, six to one, the difference between a Roman and a Jew. I'll wager 20 talents. Very well. Is your fortune even enough to pay if you lose? If I lose! <laughs> if I lose, I shall pay you. I am a man of my word. Here. And what's this name of your man? Maybe I've heard of him in some provincial contest. Did I, did I forget to mention uh, Judah Ben-Hur? <coughs> ah, Judah Ben-Hur. Have you heard of him? Yes, he's of no consequence. Well, it seems you and I have wagered our entire fortunes on this fight. It's never been so exciting. Find me some excitement in the city for once. Early. 
Yes, uh, as usual, b before the sun grows too hot. Uh, oh, come away. There are two lepers coming. I know. Well, what's that for? I, I knew them. They, they used to be good to me. Oh. Well, they're lucky to have such a good friend. Peace be with you. How is Judah? He, he's very well. He is returning to Rome, though. He's, he's got a house up there. Good. There is nothing for him here. Nothing? He would be better off making a life for himself away from the memories of this place. I suppose so. Thank you, Esther. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Is there anything special that you need? New blankets? You are too good to us, Esther. The food is all that we need. May the Lord bless you. citizens of Rome and natives of other lands. Here we open the new arena, bringing the greatest spectacles of the Roman Empire to these lands. Brutal warriors from within the Empire and those from beyond the lands held by Rome will perform before you today. Cheer for those you admire, and we will find out together who are the strongest among them. The gladiators today have been trained by Magnus Cassius, by... Kaz Warren the Celt! Kaz Warren! Kaz Warren! Kaz Warren! And by Masala, the Lord Ooh. of Rome. Ooh. Ooh. Opening today's contests, we have a gladiator trained by Kaz Warren the Celt! Yeah. Take it out! 
captured in battle in the forest of Germania, winning matches in Carthage and Syria. Too fierce to become a household slave, he instead rose to fame in the arena. It's Gregorius the Great! Gregorius! Gregorius! You got this. You got this. Gregorius will face a native woman of the city of Taraco, who sold herself to the arena in that city to pay off a family debt to the city governor. But she then became one of the most feared gladiators in the city, and was more recently bought by Magnus Cassius, who completed her training in Rome, Parisius <laughs> of Hispania! <laughs> Part, I said, a part. More for last for three seconds than my blood! I crush you with a blood. Ha ha! Come on, you're going! Come on, you're Oh, she's vicious! Get out of here! Why are you now? Oh, trained by Masala, the Lion of Rome, bought from Capua in his first ever match. It's Lironius the Ghoul! Yeah. Lironius will face... <laughs> well, it had to happen, didn't it? The warehouse raider, a merchant of the city who took to thieving from the warehouses but was offered a choice for his crimes. The galleys or the arena. Maybe he'll surprise a few of us and win his freedom. It's Quirinius. Oh, 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 no! <laughs> Boy, go on! Oh, no! <laughs> Come on, Lerodius! Come on! Come on, Corinius! Take it. Take it. Oh! Come on! deserves a bit more of a challenge. What do we think, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Yeah. Next to face Laronius, he who has already defeated the champions of Alexandria, Asturia, and Serta himself, the undefeated champion of Lugdunum, Casimir, the vicious Venita. <laughs> Hot. 
which has been spoken of in every street, in every tavern, every hovel, every place in Judea. A contest between two free men of the city who have built careers in the arena by their own choice. First, I am proud to present the Lion of Rome, a tribune by rank and commander of the garrison here in Judea. He lived in Jerusalem as a boy before being taken to Rome for his education and training in the military, then fighting in our wildest northern borders on the Germanian front. He trains gladiators himself. You have seen some perform here today, but now he will enter the arena for himself. Please welcome Masala! <laughs> Masala will face the Prince of Jerusalem, a native of Judea himself, a noted gladiator and charioteer, five-time victor in the Circus Maximus in Rome, taken by naval commander Tribune Quintus Arius from the benches of the galleys, trained alongside the other gladiators owned by Arius, but will today fight as champion for Kazwar and the Celt. Please welcome a Judah Ben Hur. Mm-hmm. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, after four epic contests, we finally have crowned our victor. Please welcome Judah Ben Well, the crowd are going wild. One of their own has won the games for the first time. Yes, Governor. Well then, Judah Ben Hur. Accept your prize and take your bow. Judah! 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 Judah bin her. Yes? My master Masala lives. He is asking for you. I have nothing to say to him. I shall tell him. But Dominus, he may not have long to live. I suppose I should go. Forgive me, uh, Governor. So, Masala, it ends here. Ah, uh, so you think? It never ends, Judah, when you offend Rome. It never I ends. never offended Rome. Oh, I know. never. But somebody had to be made an example of to coward people. You should know better. And they did me. It's not over, Judah. It is, Masala. <laughs> I know what happened to your mother and sister. They're dead. You said so yourself. I lied to you, Judah. They're alive for now. <coughs> Why did they? Why did you lie, Masala? Where are they? <coughs> Tell me. They can't come back, or they'd be stoned to death. Now that was Judah. You're lying, Masala. I'm not. As I said, it never ends. I want you to. No! No! Where's Esther? Oh, Something know. must have happened. She will be here in a minute. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I'm late, mistress. Oh, don't call me that, Esther. Judah has found out. He knows? Someone at the games told him. He won the games there yesterday. What, the Romans' bloody games? Yes, Masala died yesterday. In contest against Judah. And someone... Told him about you, and since knowing that you are dead, he has spoken of nothing but revenge. He's eaten up by hate. He, he must not ruin his life for us, but who knew? I know not. I, I must go. I'll be back tomorrow and bring you food, uh, clothing, if need be. You need only ask for anything you need. I will not leave Judah to you. I haven't told my mother either. I'll keep our secret. May the Lord bless you, Esther. J J Judah, what are you doing here? Walking, thinking. Judah, go home. Esther, my mother and sister are somewhere outside the city alone. And if, and if you find them, what can you do? Their affliction cannot be cured. It's a living death. And Judah. it's my hands that led them to this. And this cannot be the end. I have to find somewhere. Would you rather remember them as they were if you found them? Masala is gone. But he has destroyed everyone that I love. Everyone? The way of peace was a mistake. I shall not rest until all of Rome pays for this. Even, even Arius, your, your father? He is a Roman. 
Judah, you've told me the story. He wanted you unchained from your walls. He freed you. He adopted you. He even offered a home to your family should they need it. He's no traditional If writer. it were not for Rome, I should not have been. My mother and sister would be safe. Tell us I might be married by now. My mother tending to her plants in the courtyard. Rome must pay. Do you know who you sound like? I don't care. I have nothing. The Romans are a curse upon this world. You sound like Masala. Esther, I haven't seen Judah all day. I just saw him adorned by the world, but he... He hasn't rested since yesterday. He has not rested. You know he spoke to Masala. <laughs> Masala died yesterday. Yes, he did. But on his deathbed, he called for Judah. He told Judah that Terza and Miriam were cast out of the city as lepers. Esther, I am worried about him. I'm afraid we may lose him forever. I know. I know. I've just seen him. He went that way. Esther, come home now. We could search the entire city and never find him. We must wait until he is ready for him to come to us. Come home, Esther. Come home. Get out of here. Haven't you heard the Messiah? Another one. The only one, Jesus of Nazareth. I met him once. Well, he's coming here to Jerusalem. Take heart. He speaks of hope and love, of peace. I can see that you are troubled. Peace? He's a fool. There's no love or peace in this world. I hope that you can find him. Try to find him. He can work miracles. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Esther. My pleasure. Uh, Dada, how are you? Teresa is failing. The sickness is taking her faster. It will be only a matter of days before she can no longer come to the well. Is, is there anything I can, I can fetch for her? Anything I can do? No. There is nothing that can be done. Esther? Oh, Judah? Why are you here so early? Did you speak of Terza? No, you, uh, you must have mis mistaken. I was just... Uh, Mother! Mother, I... No, Judah, I, I forbid you to come any closer. Don't you see? What's your Terza? Terza, is that you? No, Judah, what you can't. You? I can and I will. I have not suffered for five years to have my mother and sister torn from me again by this. Judah, listen to me. There is nothing you can do. There is no cure for this. You are the last of our family. I order you to keep away. I am the head of our family. I say what? Judah, wait. And I am your mother, Judah. Lena tears and for I would see you come to the same fate as we. The Lord has delivered you safe back to your home, and that is more than we could have ever asked. You have murdered. 
murdered in your rage. But you have a duty to the family to continue the house of her, to move past this, to forgive, to live your life. I did not give you life for you to throw it away. To forgive? Those people are coming. <laughs> Is there anything I can do to help? Does anything? Esther here takes as much care of us as anybody could. She's a sweet, gentle soul. All you can do, Judith, is live your life. Forget about us. We have months only. And to know that you are living your life. It's the greatest reward that I could ask. Those people are coming. Please go. Don't show you. Remember what I said. You knew. They made me swear not to tell anyone. They wanted you to remember as they were. Not as this. That was not your choice to make. Or theirs. I should have been told at once. I have searched everywhere for them. I came back here from Rome to a ruined house of memories and ghosts to find them. Every breath I have taken for five long years has been with their faces in my mind to save them. And now I find this. And you, the woman I trusted most in this world after them, keeping this a secret from me. Judith, you're not thinking clearly. They are lepers. You've had your revenge on Masala. I've listened to your mother's orders and you should do No. No, Masala was right. He has destroyed my entire family, my entire life. You're not a slave. You do not need to follow anyone's orders. But you have your family name. Your family fortune, people who love you. I have less than the poorest beggar in the street. Even my mother and sister have one another. You have me. You have my mother. I freed you both. It was your choice to stay. You can leave when you like. We stayed behind because we both love you, Judah. I love you. Judah. I heard that Jesus of Nazareth is coming to Jerusalem. I heard him speak a couple years ago. His words were so moving. There was a truth in that that I have never felt that before. He said that we should love those who did us wrong and live with compassion for all others. And as I heard him speak, I felt the great peace you died. I died. don't care. I'm not interested. Please, please, Judah, come home. Don't just sit here eaten up by your grief. Please. Ah, oh, there you are, Judah. Um, oh, something's happened. What's wrong? Mother, I, I have to tell you something. I found our mistresses, oh. Miriam and Terza, a couple weeks ago. Where are they? Esther, welcome them at once. Bring them in immediately. I, I can't. The Masala kept them in the prison. He released them, but they were driven out of the city. Mother, they can never come back. They're lepers. I, I take them food to them every morning. Oh, I thought that was a rumor. Why wasn't I told? They made me promise not to tell anyone. Oh, I thought you were eating more than normal. Now I know where all the food has been going. And I take it young Judah here has only now just found out Oh, you foolish girl, why didn't you tell me? If you were still my slaves, I would have you both flogged. How dare you, Ruth, Judah! This rage is hitting you up. I told you, Salak Masala. You said you were complimented once by Emperor Tiberius. Well, why don't you go back to your fancy Rome, your fancy emperor, take your wealth and be like Masala if you wish, uh, and leave us alone? Enough, enough, both of you, stop it. Stop, listen. I have an idea. About what, Mother? Uh, about Terza and Miriam. Mother, you don't understand. They are lepers. Terza could not even speak, much less stand. There is no cure. I know, I know that. But have you not heard about the young man from Nazareth? Yes, huh? but uh, I don't think that uh, however beautiful his sermons are will help here. Judah needs to hear his words. There's something in them that heals. 
that teaches, that helps any troubled heart find peace. And there's another thing, a rumor. Malik! Yes, mistress. What were you telling me about Jesus of Nazareth, the story of the lepers, the one that you heard at the market? Talk in the market, that he met some lepers on his way to the city. He gave them his blessing as he passed. Mm -hmm. Less mm -hmm. than an hour later, they were completely cured of the mm -hmm. disease. <laughs> market talk! Mm -hmm. No, 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 Mistress Esther, it is not. The men I heard the tale from were the lepers themselves. I know them. I speak with them. Uh, last month, mm -hmm. outside the walls of the city, when I met with Sheikh Ilderim's caravan, they had been cured. Somehow, I, I do not know how or why, but there is a cure. And that young preacher from Nazareth knows it. He can, he can cure. So they say, Master. Then we must find this Jesus. Well, he's travelling to Jerusalem. He arrives in the city tonight, it will be easy to find him. Some woman by the well was babbling about that this morning. If there is any way that he can help them. Whether it is herbs, magic, or some other powers, we do not know. I'm going to the Valley no, of the Lepers. Judah, do, no, no, I forbid it. If you go there, you will never come back. I forbid it. No. Miriam and Terza come to the well every morning. We could tell them then. Terza is too ill to walk far. What if she doesn't come here tomorrow? This is I, our only plan. I know. This is our only plan, Judah. This is all we can try. But do not give them false hope. Tell them that his words may bring them peace, since that is what you believe. And truth be told, when I met him many years ago, I felt the same. Those are the first wise words you said today, Judah. Well, I will see them in the morning, and we can tell them then. If I may, Jesus of Nazareth arrives in the city today, mm. but it is said he will stay for several weeks afterwards. Mm. And for now, Judah, stay here. We can look for Terza and Miriam in the morning. There is still time. There is distant shouting in the streets. Some kind of unrest. It's probably the zealot gangs attacking the Romans. Malik, go home and bar the doors. Yes, mistress. Come on. We only have a short time. Rest. Find care. Something's happened. I don't know what, but there are no birds singing. The city is silent. Yes, something must have happened, but never mind. Esther will bring our food and we will go back. Rest while you can. Lepers, <gasps> up ahead. Lepers? Yes. Hey! Hey! Get away from oh, her! Get, get out of here! Get I can't get, get away! Hey. Go! Get, get out go. of here, you scum! Mr. Sis, it's us. What's happened? I don't know. The, the streets are quiet. There was a, a rest last night. Jesus, the preacher, was outside the city. He should be here. Yes, Esther, where do we find them? I don't know. Stay here with them. I'll go and find out. No, Esther, we cannot say. Judah, we cannot. Esther, what is this about? Well, Jesus, the preacher, the one they call Son of God, we thought that you should hear his words, especially Tarzan. No, Esther, listen to me. No. Father, listen to me. No, Judah, no, 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 Judah, what are you doing? No, Judah, stay no, away. No, stay, stay away. No, no, no. no. Without you, I have nothing. We either have each other, or we have nothing. Oh, Julia. Stay out of sight. I'll go find out where this Jesus of Nazareth is. And 
Why couldn't this be settled among themselves? This man has been convicted of blasphemy, sorcery, breaking the Sabbath! Yes, these are your laws. Rome does not involve herself in these. Here, here. So, you claim to be the king of the Jews, do you? So you say. But you will not answer to us. You remain silent. He's a liar. He's a, a liar. 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 Do you not hear the amount of things they testify against you? I have no time for this. This jail is full of miscreants and petty thieves, as well as murderers and rebels. Now, it is well known, tradition dictates, that I release one prisoner, chosen by you, the people. Now, I have received several petitions to release a man named Barabbas. I could release him, or I could release this man, this Jesus, known as the Anointed One. Barabbas! 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 Very well. Barabbas shall be released by your will. What of this man? What of the anointed one? Just crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Very well. But I am innocent of the blood of this man. I wash my hands of the decision. It's yours alone. The will of the people shall be done. <laughs> The town is so silent, there's nobody around. Oh, there's something bad is happening. It can't. Not now. I'm so sorry. I failed you all. What is he, Jester? Jesus, the preacher. He was arrested last night. Most of the people have got his trial. What? I said it myself. This cannot be. He's condemned. Condemned? Crucifixion. What has he done to deserve that? Nothing, as far as I can tell. So everything has been for nothing. We must return to the valley. Cloak yourself. There are towns people are coming. They must not see you. No. It 
It is my time. Malik will see to it this afternoon. I can scarcely believe it. Our <laughs> old home had a second chance. If it were not for your faith and the power of love, I would never have had my family back. They say that the young preacher was the son of God himself. No one could have cured such affliction. His mother. To the future. To, to the, the future. future. Mm. And to that young preacher, disgusting how he was treated. Mm. Oh, I have one more thing to say to you, young man. Have you not noticed how my daughter Esther looks at you? Mother? <laughs> oh, consider it. Look for it. I must confess, I... It is not to say that I haven't noticed her beauty. <laughs> well, you both have plenty of time to be shy now. <laughs> Where are my manners? <laughs> oh, come on. Thank you, Master. To us all. To us all! 